My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and we're going to crack on with um, the sump for the engine architecture series stuff, so we're just going to do a bit more building, and then I can do some videos later on talking about what is what. Um, so basically I put the cap on, and this is the uh, oil sump that I really haven't done uh, any recording on. I did, but it messed up. We'll get to it and you'll be able to see it in a separate video. Um, but basically this is the end cap that has the uh, main feed line in and I'm basically just well making that profile, you know what I mean? Like I say, it's all about these just building shapes and extruding things the way you want them to be and so on. That little circle you can see in the top right hand corner, that's a uh, location dowel feature. I just need to know where that is for the time being. Then I'm just going to do the feed pipe. Uh, and just basically mess around, put some bolt holes in and blend this all in and so on and so forth. So the whole idea that I wanted to do was just something a bit different. It's not groundbreaking or anything. Um, but what I wanted to do is have a almost like a double split line where the oil sump, instead of just being this, in a sense, cover, a lot of bikes actually use the sump to actually have features inside them. Uh, Kawasaki are quite renowned for doing that. Uh, and they've all done it at some some time or other um but like when i were doing the r5 and stuff you can actually see there's some quite a lot of features um in the the sump uh the bottom of the sump the cover the bottom cover is not just a cover it has the pressure release valve and some galleries and stuff in it so basically what i'm doing is trying to incorporate something that's very similar with this and the reason being i said this is going to be kind of like in the idea of a race engine um, so what you can do is you can quickly disem uh, you know, uh, disassemble this pump and replace the rotor housing. Um, and this mechanism here is designed in a sense to uh, facilitate you basically making changes quite quickly. So if at any point you wanted to change the flow rates because of cooling or something like that, then you just could. Uh, based on data you get from you know data logging and stuff like that. Um, as you see, I've put an O-ring seal in there, and there's an O-ring seal for this entire feature. It just sits in there, and then the, the housing is built into the actual sump, so where the rotor pump and everything goes, and you can basically disassemble the whole thing. Uh, here I'm selecting a bearing, um, one of the main bearings that goes in the end there, to sit against the main shaft. And now and then you have to do these cross sections and stuff, so you can see what's going on. Um, so what I'm doing is just measuring that so I can put a snap ring in there or a you know a um, circlip in there and this is me just basically doing a revolve cut to put the cir the circlip groove in there. A uh, bit of a fiddly way to do this but you can basically just take the sump off and uh, fish out all the, the, the you know you can replace the whole section. If you don't want to do that and you just want to replace the actual rotor housing then you can just basically pop off that end cap and then just drag out the entire thing with the shaft and everything included. And uh, the drive gear, that drive gear you can see there, that's a plastic drive gear. And we are going to, I'm going to do a video talking about why some of these material choices are used, you know, why they're chosen that way, so on and so forth. You can also see there's a tang there so start, stuck up at the top. That's also so you can literally lever at the thing and get the thing off if you require it to get the bearing out. Um, but you can see in this entire assembly, you can see that I'm having to do this thing eccentric, obviously because the shaft for this is eccentric, where the main drive is concentric, if that makes any sense to bloody anybody. Um, so now I shuffle things around. You do this backwards and forwards, you shuffle around, you move things, and then you have to basically just relocate grooves or put a secondary groove in or something like that. Um, so you can see the old berries inside there. Basically, you should be able to just... Um, the gear is kind of ring captive. I'll get to that later. Uh, and then this is the main feed. Now, this is the bit that I had footage for but lost. You can see in the bottom of the sump there, we are actually using the sump mating surfaces as the oil gallery passages. So I'm using this as an example in the future as well to show flow rates um, of oil passages because a lot of people get a bit confused um, about flow rates and uh, mass flow rates and stuff like that, and oil feeds um, and where restrictions are and so on and so on, where oil pressure drops and latency and all that kind of gubbins and good stuff. 
So this is basically just running through and matching the cases up so all of these line up. And then I'll also put some silicon sealant channels in and I'll get to all that as well. Um, but like I said, I'm just trying to line this all up and make sure everything goes where I want it to go. And there's a, a, a basically this is a flow through system. Some systems go in and return on themselves. A lot of systems actually do that. This is actually a flow through system. So the oil goes in one end and comes out the back. Um, and like I say, I'll do videos in the future talking about the pros and cons and the benefits of such a system and so on and so on. Um, a lot of oil pumps are actually almost off the shelf aftermarket systems not so much aftermarket just they kind of have that uh they're, they're in closed systems so the system for the ntv we looked at the yamaha r1 one that i have at the moment the um triumph one stuff like that they are literally a standalone unit that you basically just bolt into your casing and then just plumb up you know they're a complete separate entity um Here's me just adding the main oil feed. There you can see the gully for that. And just doing all the, the radii of some of these corners and stuff to just, uh, help, not con help not contribute to cavitation uh, and turbulence and stuff like that. Although this really isn't flowing that fast. Um, and you can see when I put the whole thing together, you can see how the whole thing lines up and where things go. And the main oil feeds come up through the top and you can see there's there's not a capped section there so i need to add that in and make sure nothing like the crankshaft collides with it or anything horribly wrong like that this is just to show you certain you can see where there's the oil outlet um and how it goes up to the top of the casing that isn't blanked off yet i'm just you know literally just playing by ear with this thing really it's uh just just to do something a bit different and something that isn't uh, generally seen so we can just talk about some of the aspects so I'm kind of forward thinking in this of not only what's this going to look like and what's it going to work like but also talk about some of the problems um, that arise from doing basically new things and stuff like that and was this the best way blah 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 and you know more of a discussion than just doing some CAD stuff um, and as you can see when you put all the assemblies back in and so on we're trying to I'm trying to also play with a bit of like mass centralization so you know people ask a lot about that so trying to roll all this into one um so just not make it one model about one thing because it you know it does take a lot of time so uh, it's trying to roll everything in together so it, everything serves more than one purpose there you can see that's just where that um cap sits on the end you can see the big uh, bulbous section of the oil pan exactly where the pump lies and when you actually look at it, 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 it you know, originally it looks quite big, but when you actually bleh, <laughs> spit it out, when you actually look at it as a whole as an engine, that little lump and bump at the front where this oil pump uh, is, 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 is it's insignificant. It's really small and really tiny, really. Um, and like I say, the whole something is just a work in progress. I'm just still pissing around with it. Then I check certain things. And I'm just making sure that everything goes and looks sensible and... Um, yeah, you know, you get more ideas as you spin things around. It's not just a techno rave. It actually has some kind of purpose. Hope that makes sense for now, and I'll see you in a bit.